Hello, I'm Steve Nave, and this is the Actors Showcase. And I'm sitting next to the lovely and talented actress, Miss Lana Wood. Lana, thank you for coming and being a part of our show. Well, thank you. It's great to have you. It's lovely to be here. And I am, again, looking at those gorgeous eyes. And you say they're green, right? Uh, yes, of are? course they are. OK. Is that a family trait or just? Uh... Um, actually, on my mother's side, yes. Oh. My mother had the same color eyes I do. And my daughter and her son. Uh huh. Great. Just kept on going. Well, we're talking to legendary actors, and you certainly have been in some of the great movies in the in the business. Uh, um, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the Searchers when you were just a child, and you played your sisters. You played your sister as a young person. As a person, child, yeah, right, before right. Before you were kidnapped by those pesty Indians. <laughs> but, uh, tell me, what's your earliest memories of acting? And that was it. Uh -huh. The Searchers was it. I remember more about The Searchers than I do a lot of other things that I've done, oddly enough. Really? I think it's because it was the very first thing I ever did. And um, I was also, it was also alien. I was taken away from California. I was in the desert. I was in Monument Valley. Mm -hmm. I could hear Indians chanting at night because we were living above a trading post, my, my sister, myself, and my mom, and um, the sand and the sandstorms and uh, John Wayne and remembering dialogue, and wow. it was all just sort of uh, very, very memorable. I remember all of it. I remember turning on the faucets at night to bathe, and uh, you'd have to let them run for a while because they would come out orangey from, from the sand from the, yeah. that was getting into the water system. And, and working with John Ford, was, was he... A nice to a little girl? Or was it... I don't think John Ford cared for children much. Wow. He gave me uh, some bits of direction and uh, more or less left me alone. Mm -hmm. uh, John Wayne was, was really lovely. He was just sort of, he was comforting to be around, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. He would come up to me every single morning. He would do the same thing. He would stand next to me, not say anything, but he would reach into his pocket and pull out a, a tin of Allen Berry's black currant pastilles, and he would open it up and he would pass them over, and I would take one, and uh -huh. he would say, "Take another one," and I would take another one, uh -huh. and uh, he nudge me or push me or ruffle my hair, which drove me crazy, and walk off. But uh -huh. he was always there, and he was always smiling, and he was always watching, and uh, he was very, he was comforting, as I say. Who was incredible was Jeffrey Hunter. Oh, really? Oh my God, what a lovely man! He would seriously like crouch down. Uh, I was eight years old, so it wasn't a weird thing. <laughs> he would he would crouch down so that he was on my level and talk to me and ask me how I was and how I felt and did I need help with lines and what did I do the night before and I mean he was just lovely and he meant it. It was a genuine thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't simply a you know oh I'll go be nice to the the kid. kid yeah. yeah. Was it like a family on the set or? It was, it was, yeah. It was very nice. Ken Curtis would always be whittling something and would give me all these lovely things that he had made. A, a little knife, a little dog, a little, he would always come and pass them along. And I remember having a huge crush on Patrick Wayne, oh, yeah. who I thought was just gorgeous. One of my first Even at the age class. of eight. Was it really? Yeah, he was in my class. with. We were wow. talking earlier, Richard Chamber was in the class, and Patrick Wayne. And, and who was the teacher? Vincent Chase. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know uh, Richard Chamberlain visited Milton Katselis's class mm -hmm. many times. Who is a, who is a fine. Who have you teacher. studied with? Now you know a lot of our. I've studied in the School of Hard Knocks. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I've never studied. Wow. I've never studied. I took a couple of classes one time from Jeff Corey. Um, well, I Mr. had nice, some. Wasn't he? Mr. Yes. Sweetheart of a guy, yes. wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> Mm. Remember that time he smiled? What year was that? Yeah, no, no, I don't recall that, actually. <laughs> I, was, I was absent that day. Yeah, um, well, you were so great as a kid, you know, just starting out. And the movie, The Searchers, was voted the number one Western of all time by AFI. It is such a phenomenal film to this day. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't anyone that I run into that doesn't say it's a classic, it's wonderful, it's perfect. It still works. Everything about the film works. The humor, the pathos, the mm -hmm. I, everything. Yeah, it's yeah. just. Uh, well, it was, you and your sister were both terrific in it. Thank you. Uh, moving on from the Searchers, what was your next? Um, my goodness, what was my next foray one? Foray into acting. I don't know. I began doing a lot of television. I did. Uh, 
a show called Playhouse 90, sure. which was live mm -hmm. and uh, like quite it? innovative. Sort of nerve-wracking. Like <laughs> nerve, it was nerve-wracking when you're yeah. a child jumping into something like that with uh, John Frankenheimer directing and oh. playing Dana Winter as a child. I worked actually very consistently as a child in uh, just about every show that was going on at the time. Did your mother coach you or did you? Uh, no. No, no one coached me You just at got all. your lines and you just figured yeah, out how to do it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I was a young teenager that I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Wow. And I literally ran away from home. I went to school in the morning, but I went to a pay phone and called my sister and said, I don't want to go on this interview this afternoon. I, I want to stay in school. I want to do what all the other kids are doing. So you felt it was and, taking uh, away from your childhood or your, your Oh, enormously, teens, right? enormously. Yeah. Um, particularly when you're in middle school and um, you become an oddity. I didn't have friends. I wasn't going and doing anything uh, with, with kids. I, and it's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went to live with Natalie and um, my mom finally calmed down sufficiently. And I got to go to football games and sneak cigarettes in the bathrooms and you do all the things. Um, I was going to um, two schools. It was Grant uh -huh. High School. North I Hollywood. then transferred. Yeah. yeah. And right. Well, yeah. Tom and Selleck went there. Yes. Yes. yes I, he was big on always pointing that out. We went to the same school. <laughs> I said, not the same years. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then I, I didn't go back into acting until I had graduated school. And I was actually working as a sales girl selling clothing in a sort of upscale boutique -y place in Beverly Hills. Oh. And Steve McQueen's wife, Neil, came in. And she said, oh my God, Lon, I haven't seen you in so long. And how have you been and what are you doing? And she told me about um, a show at Universal Studios where Leo Penn, the director, was looking for a young girl who was over the age of 18 but could look 14 to play Walter Matthau's daughter. Oh. And she said, you've got to go out for it. And I said, ah, 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 ah. And she said, no, 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 no. Let me call, let me set it up, let me. Mm -hmm. And she called me later and she said, you're going to be there on such and such a day wow. at this time and you're going to go. And I said, okay, fine, fine, I'll go. I went, uh, got the role. What was the film? Um, it was a television show. It was oh, okay. Dr. Kildare. Oh, okay. And um, after I worked that day, and I had changed back into my normal clothing and I was walking off the set, I thought, oh my God, this is really what I like. Mm -hmm. I do love this, but I didn't know until then because as a child, you do as you're told. Sure. You don't really second guess anything or really, or at least I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really have an opinion of what I liked or disliked. I simply did what I was told to do. So it took, uh, took me a while. Did your sister help you? Or she did later you? on. Uh -huh. She did later on. I would, I would come to her when I was uh, trying out for the uh, role of Eula in The Long Hot Summer, the Lee Remick role that they were making into oh, yeah. a series. Um, I said, you've got to listen to this. You've got to coach me. You've got to help me. You've got to do. You've got to. So we, uh, we holed up in her, in her place and uh, went over dialogue and things. And yeah, she was always very happy to do that. Did she study a lot? What, no, she never studied. Wow, never that's studied. amazing. Never saw the inside of anybody's acting studio. And she was ever. nominated like three or four times for yes, Oscars. Yes, wow. yes, yes. That's amazing. Um, no, it it seriously is. It, you know, whenever we would talk about it, and and my feelings and her feelings, is we went from the gut. Right, right. You react how you know. That's right. Um, it's it, Ilya Kazan once told Natalie. Uh, a wonderful story when she was having a lot of trouble on uh, Splendor, Splendor in the, the Grass. grass. Yeah. Do you know the story then? Uh, go ahead, tell it. Um, she had a crying scene and she's always had a problem crying. It always concerned her. And um, he said, oh, stop worrying about it. Don't that be? He said, wait a minute here, Barbara Loden, come over. So Barbara walked up and he said, Barbara, could you cry for Natalie, please? And Barbara said, okay and lifted her head up and tears were streaming down her face and Natalie was sitting with her mouth open and um, he said, thank you, Barbara, okay. He said, Natalie, how did you feel? And she said, well, that was incredible. That was really great. Oh my God, that was so, he said, no, no, no. How did you feel? And she said, oh, I, I didn't feel anything at all. Hmm. 
And he said, precisely. He said, show me what you are feeling. Wow. Don't worry about whether tears are going to come or not going to come. If you are showing me an honest emotion, mm -hmm. that's what moves people mm -hmm. and not something that you can turn on and off. Right. And uh, that's basically how she worked and it's always how I worked is I just went by guts. Wow. How did I feel at that time? How is this, obviously you get into things where you say this character, but once you open your mouth, it's you. Yeah. Um, well, I said earlier today we were talking about training and Robert Mitchum once said learning to act was like learning to be tall. <laughs> you know, yes, exactly. So you either, you know, you have a talent or you, you don't. Well, you, you can either open up and not be afraid to show how it is you're feeling or you hold back and it's those actors that I see holding back and trying to control as not being terrifically interesting to watch mm. for me. Right. Um, I think you really do have to learn to let go of your, your inner feelings as far as Did what you? is going on. I was under contract 13 shows later when Long Hot Summer was cancelled, Fox kept putting me in different shows mm -hmm. because I was, they were still paying me. So they would say, you're doing this, you're doing this, So you did a lot of this. guest stars? And a lot of guest stars. Because I was looking you up, you've done well over a hundred and some things. Oh yeah. Did you, if you did, want to count individual times I've been in a show on TV, I've done over 300. Yeah. Because I went from the Long Hot Summer to Peyton Place. Right. Now you were, weren't you recurring on there? Regularly? Yes, I was a regular yeah, on Peyton a Place. You did a year or two on that, didn't you? Yes. Uh, oh yeah. 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 And there was another series too, wasn't there another? I uh, did a soap later on called Capital that was on CBS. Oh, that's right. Uh, when you, when you, you're working on a film, you're looking to go through five pages of your scene. Right. Um, maybe in the afternoon you hit another scene, you do another three or mm -hmm. four. And uh, on a soap opera, you're doing the whole thing. How did you and transfer And it's a nightmare. Yeah, I, I panicked um, when I was doing it because I was like, holy mackerel. Yeah, I remember feeling sort of rattled, very mm -hmm. rattled, standing outside, waiting outside of the, the scene, waiting to enter into it, waiting to see that red light, which means you're on and right. you're on the air and you're on live and don't mess up. Right. Heart pounds well, a Edna, lot. Edna? One question I got to ask before we talk about your, your scene with the... Uh, the dice rolling and everything. Did that was actually you, of course, that jumped out of the hotel that got thrown. Actually, out. it was Mr. Smart Alex. Was it really? You? Yes, it was. Wow, how far that was done in three different takes. Wow, out the window, the first three feet onto a mattress, me. Wow, over to the International Hotel, whole different setup, big ten foot platform that they built specifically for this wow. scene. Nice big sturdy six foot stunt man, me standing on his shoulders. 16 feet, a very long way to yeah, fall. That's a long fall. Didn't like it. Wow, your little legs were going uh, uh, down the thing. And, yeah. yeah. Then they wearing the then little, uh, they're, they're what, little yeah. outfit. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, was being polite. I just spoke I, to yeah. Guy Hamilton, by the way. I'll have to tell you about that. But they did throw a mannequin, a nice soft dummy, out the window. So a portion of that was uh, an inanimate object. But that was me. Wow. That was I didn't me know there hitting was a the pool water. Do, what, yeah. What's his name? Uh, the, the the mob guy. The, oh, it was Mark his, Lawrence and Mark Sid Lawrence. Haig. Yeah, Mark, were the bad guys yeah. in that. It was um, it was a character that concerned me, actually, because I accepted the role not having read it. Oh. Um, I just I used to, I remember reading Ian Fleming, and I loved those kind of books. I still do read those kind of books, but now it's. You know Dan Brown and James Rawlins and right. Gregory I Greg Isles and you know, Dennis Lehane. But anyway, um, so I was just delighted to be a part of it. And then when I read it, I became very concerned because what does she do for a living? Oh, she's a shill. Ah, oh, that's an attractive kind of. No, it's not. Um, and I've always had this voice. I have a, a deeper voice that's big mm -hmm. and uh, I was really afraid that if I sounded the way that I do and played that role she could be unlikable mm. that she would come across too much mm -hmm. so I went to Guy Hamilton on the first day 
and said, can I, I was kind of thinking, uh, I wanted to use a cross between, oh, Minnie Mouse and Lee Taylor Young, <laughs> kind of a, a fresh sort of a, a higher pitched voice because I wanted plenty to be likable. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to be empty headed. That's just what she does for a living. Mm -hmm. But she's a perfectly nice, rather naive, very upfront kind of ingenuous girl. And he looked at me and he said, do whatever you'd like. I said, okay, thank you. So I just, I ran with it and I was, I was concerned because I wanted people to, to like her. Now you're doing a lot of projects right now, aren't you? Uh... It's absolutely bizarre. I, I stopped acting many years ago. I went behind the camera, which mm -hmm. I adored. I went into, I was director of development over at Universal Studios. I moved over to Warner's, um, put together a lot of films for television, worked with some wonderful people, had incredible time, mm -hmm. um, moved into producing television films, loved it, was having a great time, and then due to some very serious illnesses in our family, first with my mother and then my daughter, I stopped doing anything at all. Mm. And um, all of a sudden, somebody found me and decided that I was uh, interesting and viable again, which was interesting to me. That's great. And uh, I did uh, two pilots. I finished a, a feature film, The Book of Ruth, which is, yes, the biblical, biblical. The yeah. Book of Ruth. Wow. Um, I am going to start a horror film November 1st that I'm really looking forward to. I wanted to do one so badly. Have you ever done one before? Nope. Or? Well, yeah. I, I've done some that were rather horrific, yes. <laughs> but uh, this one's going to be something else. It's called Renovation. Oh. And I'm really looking forward to it. Has to, to do it. with remodeling in homes? Yes, and stuff. remodeling yeah. a, an old hotel. Oh, okay, good. And I literally had to sign disclosure non-disclosure, so I'm not allowed. And my scenes, my additional scenes, are going to be mailed only to me, as are three other characters are getting their scenes mm -hmm. sent to them separately, uh, yeah. three right pivotal characters. Well, Lana, you know, a lot of people that are watching this show tonight, or today, depending on where you might be, um, are interested in becoming actors, mm -hmm. and they're all over the world. You've had a very long career from the time you were a child. Yes. You're now very hot again. You're, well, you've always been hot. But I mean. <laughs> hot. That's very sweet of you. I think my grandchildren would probably well, not agree with you, well, but that's okay. 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 I'll, I'll run up to them and I'll, I go, my Wild Wild West is on. Do you guys want to see it? And they go, uh, no. No, not really. Uh, no. Uh, uh. no. Well, I'd like to see it. But Thank anyway, you. Um, do you have any uh, tips for actors? And You know, I mean, it is a business and it is... You know, you've got to study. We touched on it a little while yes. ago about the fact that you haven't even studied, but you've been so accomplished. But well, I was very fortunate in the fact that I was basically studying by doing, and right. not everyone is afforded that. Yeah. You don't get to work with John Wayne and John no, Ford and, and Jack Lemmon and, and Walter Matthau yeah. and. Uh, Charlton Heston, and I, I mean, I, I could go on and ben on and on. Jan, John Cassavetes, yeah. and uh, yeah, Ben Johnson, and John Wayne, and yeah. as I yeah. say, I could go on and on and on. Um, who, did, who did you learn the most from watching on the set, working with? Working with, I really loved working with Ben Gazzara. Oh, really? I just loved him. Um, he was one of those people that really listened I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, he, was, he was terrific. I did uh, the Leon Uris QB7 mm. with Ben Gazzara. I lost an agent over doing that. I wanted to because. be in it so badly. I've always had a very odd, for the time that I grew up in, in the film industry, an odd sort of uh, viewpoint of acting is I, I simply wanted to act. I didn't really concern myself with, was this good for my career? Was this good? Or maybe I should do this, or maybe I should be nice to these people. I wanted to do the work. Mm -hmm. And um, I lost a very powerful agent over doing mm -hmm. QB7 because they said, 
you know, you've just finished the Bond thing, you've just done this and this, and, and now you're going to accept, you know, an ensemble piece where you're gonna, you're gonna work on it for three days and that's it. And I said, Leon Uris, Ben Gazzara, Anthony Hopkins, yes. Yeah. Yes, this is precisely there, yeah. what I want to do. And yeah. they said, well, then we don't want to represent you anymore. Wow. And I said, okie doke. Wow. And that was it. What, what, but, about um, ben, what about Ben really grabbed you? Ben was concerned with the people he was working with in the scenes. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he wasn't just concerned with his character. He was concerned about how his character was going to interact with these other people. Mm -hmm. um, every minute we got, he would say, do you want to come and rehearse? And I'd say, yes. And we would, you know, go find a corner and sit and talk about things and do the scenes and, and try to see how we were connecting. Because if you can forget about your dialogue mm -hmm. and concern yourself more with who you are in the scene and what's going on with the other people that you are interacting with, it brings things to a different oh, kind of a level. Very good point. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, it's not just all about you. Mm -hmm. It's You're it's reaching a, out to the other people yeah, that you're relating to. Yeah, yeah. And listening to their reactions and not worrying about how your character is going to react, but how does your character react when this person says this? Right, and how they it's, say it. And, oh, you know. yeah, precisely, right, precisely. Right. Now, it can change so much in, in your performance when sure. you allow yourself to react to that person that you're working with. Well, the only advice that I would give is to persevere, to try to find hone your, your craft mm -hmm. every chance you get, and to not take it personally, mm -hmm. but to be in it for the acting's sake. That's I think great. it makes a big difference. That's great. Lana, you've been lovely and charming. and Thank lot of you. Very, Fooled you, huh? Yeah, I well, you certainly <laughs> did. No, not at all. In fact, I, I expected oh, nothing less. Oh, that's but, very sweet. Uh, Thank you. It's great to have you here. I've been a Thank big you. fan. And uh, we want to say from the Actors Showcase, this is Steve Nave. And we've just talked with Lana Wood, a fantastic actress, a oh, great guest, you. and Thank you. a lovely lady. So we hope to see you again very soon.